Hi y'all, it's Saya here again on another day, I believe it's day six now, of our robot junkyard build. And here we are outside on a very brisk fall day and I'm getting ready to do some painting with some spray paint. So I've been thinking about the color theme that I want to use with this and um, thinking about how I usually do my 2D junkyards. And one of the things I do with the 2D junkyards is I just start out with a big mess of shapes and um, I just kind of fill in here and there until the junkyard's full. So I kind of feel like I'm doing that with this piece as well. I'm just kind of filling in until the piece is full. But the problem is um, with the when I do it with acrylics and watercolor, I'm getting the perfect color mix that I want. And here I'm just kind of throwing things together and I'm not really liking the color scheme of things. Um, because we're going to try to do things in black and pink and white and maybe throw in a little bit of blue. I haven't quite decided yet, but I kind of like that idea and that, that theme is kind of working in my head right now. But here we have some greens and some browns and um, some reds. So the browns, you know, we can't really uh, do much about that because we've got the rusty parts. And I think I want to keep some of those things rusty. But I think I might be able to give those just a little bit of a pink tint later on with some, uh, with a little bit of pink. Maybe have a little bit of black here and there, like some of the paint's worn off and now it's rusty. Um, but anyway, I'm, I've got some spray paint here and I'm going to touch up just the places that I think I want to change the color and the rest of it I think maybe we'll, we'll paint. But if I start out with a black base and that will kind of help me make my outlines and I kind of want it to have that feel like um, I've been painting it and it's an actual art piece rather than just a pile of junk. So here we go. I'm going to just start spray painting and unfortunately I don't have my, I, my tripod out here so I'm going to have to set the phone down um, while I spray paint. So whether or not I get any good footage uh, we'll find that out later on but here we go. So I finished off what I had of this Krylon here, um, and it's just a uh, black satin. So that's gone, and that's what I had on hand. And I also had some of this on hand, which is a high-performing enamel, and it's also a fast dry. So we'll be letting this Rust-Oleum here dry for another 15 minutes before I bring it into the house and we do any work on it inside. In fact, I've got something else to show you that's already on my desk and it's prepped and ready. So let's just go on inside and see what we've got. Hey everyone, we're back. So first of all, let me tell you what happened with this. So I was working this and I was working this and I put a new eye in it. And I didn't like that either. And I put some ears in it. Remember, I put the little um, beads that I found that kind of looked kind of mechanical. I put those in there and I didn't like them. It wasn't working real well with this clay. I didn't leave enough space for those. So I decided to just start again. And we have a mold. So that's the good thing. And I was able to just kind of press this out real quick. And I decided to keep the baby's nose because I started to feel like the other one was looking too alien-like. And I even misspoke and called it an alien once and, and I kind of felt like that was probably um, how other people would see it as well. And I want it to look robotic, um, not alien-like. So. I'm going to try to stay with the face and I put a blue eye, a blue glass eye in there and I like that a lot better. So I'm going to fire that up. And I've also been using some of that old clay that we made that looks like terracotta to make some molds. So I made this out of an old, I don't know, I guess it's like a necklace or something. Um, I just dusted it with some 
cornstarch and made an impression, so we'll be baking that. Oh. And I made another one. And that one I made out of an old ear out of an old earring. These used to be cool back in the I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. So um I've been finding new and interesting ways to use these. So that's that. And I'll be putting those in the oven tonight. And I have a little bit of clay left over. And um, this is going to be the fun part. I'm going to let you watch me do it. This clay got dirty over time. And so we're taking that bead out. And now we can just mash it all up together. Mash, mash, mash. Yeah, I thought you might enjoy that. I do. It kind of finalizes it, doesn't it? So let's just put that aside. And now we have some really dirty clay that we can use to make other nasty robots that are going in our junkyard. So it doesn't matter how dirty they are. In fact, I'll probably give them each a paint job. So that leads us to now. And see, I still have a whole bunch of that clay left. Um, you know how much I love this. Woo. Um, so I'll be using this in different ways. And I really enjoy Sculpey. Um, it's one of my favorite, polymer clay is one of my favorite mediums. And I've been working in polymer clay for several years. So I'll just set this aside. And we'll cover it up so we don't get any cat hair on it. And we'll put that toward the back of the desk. And now let me tell you what else I've been doing. I've been doing a little trial and error with some wood clay. So here's the wood, here's my wood clay. Well, here's a lump of it anyway, wrapped up in some moist towels. Hold on. Let me get this open for you and we'll... This is what I had left over last night when I stopped playing around. So here it is. It's just a, a regular uh, air dry clay. And uh, so let's get that out. But before I start playing with it too heavily, let me tell you what happened. I was experimenting and I put this uh, clay over a glass bottle that I had dug out of our... Um, uh, our last house, we were doing some renova renovations and it, this came out of the dirt. So uh, I had cleaned the bottle as well as I could and then I just kind of applied this uh, this layer of clay over it and I tried sticking things into it and um, seeing how different... Oh, that fell out. Um, oh, and see it, it broke. No big deal. Um, so as you can see, there are... <laughs> it is heavily cracked. And this is a lesson learned because now I know that um, thin layers of clay um, don't work. I've since read that in order to keep wet clay from cracking as it dries, you should let it dry very slowly and it should always be like at least a, a quarter of an inch thick. So two things I did wrong here. I put it over, well, a few things I did wrong. Let me tell you what I did. I First of all, I put it over an armature that wouldn't um, allow the clay to condense as it dried. So as it, as it dried, and it was a very thin layer, as you can see. It was a very thin layer. As it dried, it cracked because this was it this is too hard and uh, so there was also some lines that I had drawn in there purposely and it kind of cracked along the, some of those lines as well you can see that it cracked along here <coughs> so there are all there are a lot of different ways that uh, I have failed this and also we recently polyurethaned our stairs little pieces are falling off as I talk and so we recently polyurethaned our stairs and it took a couple days to dry. So we had a fire going downstairs um, and it's been pretty cold and damp. So we had a dehumidifier going at the same time. 
and uh, so we were trying to dry those stairs and as a result the house got hot and it got really uh dry so i think those were a couple things and also it just it just dried too fast so i think knowing those things i can do better next time <laughs> But isn't it cool? I kind of, I still kind of like it. I feel like it should, it still belongs in the junkyard, um, as dinged up and as cracked up as it is and pieces keep falling off. So I think what I'll do is I will, um, once this is fully dry and it's still cold, so I know it's not fully dry yet. Once this is fully dried, I'm going to give it a coating of, um, acrylic paint and I'm going to see, I'm going to see how well it holds up and maybe we'll just kind of put it in the, um, in the junkyard somewhere. So let me put this aside. Now here's the arm I made to go with that. And I purposely used a, um, a piece of rusty metal to kind of, kind of make it look like it was deteriorating. And I gave it some lines and I put a few screws in there and it seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, the only armature that really is in here is just some loose wires and um, I feel like this is, is drying more naturally. It's, uh, it's still a little cold so I know it's still damp but I feel like I feel like this is holding together much better. I do see that there's a crack here and as I was saying before, cracks are fine. Cracks are things that I want in my junkyard. So unintentionally, this is good. I'm going to set this aside and let this dry fully before I give it a paint. So I noticed that there was some screws and there were some things that were falling out. So here we've got some, I'm just going to toss that aside and we'll save this little tiny screw because it's cute. Um... So that said, here's our clay, and I started this. I started this robot out of clay that I was going to make, um, and this is shaped like one of the characters that I like to uh, draw a lot. His name is Ray. So I'm gonna start out just by giving it a good. So what I did differently with this was that I first gave it a layer of aluminum foil and then I put tape over the areas where I want the clay to go. And I'm hoping that that will give the, the back part of the clay something to adhere to. Um, so that when it starts to condense, it will condense around those things rather than the glass and, and just break. I'm hoping that that will work. That combined with the fact that I'm going to add more clay because this is clearly not a quarter of an inch yet, um, especially down around here, and it's it's uneven. Um, so I'm just gonna um, work my clay. So now I'm going to score all of this. I'm gonna get nice and wet. I'm gonna score it, and then I'm gonna add more clay to it. I really hope this works and I'm going to give it a longer drying time.
So the idea is that Ray is a little can, basically. <clears throat> and this part kind of comes down into his little um, roller ball that helps him move. And he has a little dome-like head that sits on top. And um, he's one of the very first robots I started drawing. Probably about 15 years ago now. And uh, it started with a book from the Sketchbook Project. So the theme I chose was Science Project Gone Wrong. And um, it was basically about uh, the scientist who builds himself a robot for a competition and the robot dreams. And it's all about the robot's dreams. I think I need a little more clay on this side here. But uh, I think it's coming along. And now it's getting to where I can really start shaping it and getting it uh, getting it the way I, I want it. And it needs a little bit more up here. In fact, it needs a little bit more all around the top there. And, uh, and then it just needs some, some working out. So, I came back from break and I got myself out some more clay. Here it is in this bag. And I put I put Ray in a plastic baggie for now, along with my arm and the other little uh, bits and pieces, because I, I want them to dry slowly, and I don't want Ray to dry at all. Um, so I put those in here, and I'm kind of cleaning up for the night, because I want to um, get some other things done. And uh, I've been on break and I go back to work tomorrow, so um, I kind of wanted to enjoy my evening with my better half. So there you have it, and when we come back, we will take a look at the Robot Junkyard build. Actually, let me take you over there now. So here's the Robot Junkyard build. That's what we've got going on so far. It's kind of looking like a Louise Nevelson piece right now, but pretty soon we will be painting it and adding robot pieces and it'll start to look like a very miniature sized junk card. So here I've been sorting out some pieces and junk. This is like cords and cables. Here we have some metal pieces. I'll try to get out of the light here. And down here we have some plastic pieces. And here we have some wood pieces. And here's some paper we can fill in with. Bunches of packing paper. And of course we've got like the little colored papers and that kind of thing that we can use too. And here's a bunch of plastic forms, which I don't think we'll be using. Um, here's some cotton fluff, which I think we will be using. Um, some keyboard keys, which we won't be using. Um, and just some this and that's. So stay tuned, and when we come back, we'll do some more arts and and Bye for now. <laughs> 